Um, and again, also the principal system is the laser designator that we'll use to not just do the ranging, but also be the laser that the system will guide down. So, um, as we talked about in the last note, we select our weapons uh, through the weapon panel down here. Um, in this case, the, the Vickers are on the outside panels, uh, weapon uh, station. So I'll go ahead and select that. And we see our designation for the anti-tank missile. We see that we have 12 of them on board, uh, six on each of the two uh, APU-6 uh, launchers. Uh, down here, we can jettison the stores if we wish. The switch here, um, we talked a little bit about this last time. We have manual mode and auto mode. Um, and this controls the ability of the Schwal to automatically adjust the gate size when tracking. Uh, it also allows the restrictions to employ the weapon uh, if you're outside uh, launch constraints. And also it will adjust the elevation of the APU-6 launchers to better align the missile with the locked target. Um, in terms of the burst length here, when it's in the short mode, it'll launch just one missile at a time, whereas if it is in the medium or the long setting, it'll launch two missiles at a time. And this is handy when you're attacking a heavily armored target or if you want to increase your chances of target kill uh, on the first launch. Now we have the Vickers selected. We have some also some additional symbology uh, up here on the HUD, uh, and that is the Vicker reticle. Uh, and this shows us where the, um, uh, the Vicker is looking, and it consists of a line out here which um, indicates the maximum range of the missile. The little line here indicates the minimum line. And then around the outside is a third line which either grows or contracts according to range to target. Now, as long as this, this line is within this, these two other smaller lines, it indicates that you're within valid range uh, to target. Uh, and right now we see that it's 5.6 uh, kilometers. Now, if we go ahead and move the Vicker reticle over the Schwal reticle, we have a C, which indicates that we're in a valid uh, uh, launch parameter to fire that missile. If we move outside, uh, the C goes away. Now, at any time, I can also refresh my laser uh, ranging by pressing down the designate button. And when I do that, I have the uh, laser designation ranging uh, indication up here. We have a countdown timer that indicates uh, how long it will be until I can do a ranging again, uh, basically to avoid uh, burning out the laser. So we have our target locked. Uh, we'll go ahead and actually set this to uh, medium, so we'll actually fire two missiles. I'm going to keep her in auto mode. I'm going to hold, I'm going to put one reticle over the other and hold down the weapon release button. And there go the missiles. You see that this indication that it is tracking uh, using the, um, the laser, and this is the countdown timer until impact, uh, plus six seconds. So at six seconds, we'll have impact, which we see and the target is dead. Let's go ahead and do another target. Go ahead and lock them up. Uh, but this time we'll go ahead and just do a single missile. So I'm going to put this down to short. Align my reticles. And launch. I notice the uh, spiral corkscrew pattern of that missile uh, that's because the, um, the missile only has a single uh, servo uh, for steering control. Uh, as such, you get that corkscrew pattern because it only has one axis that it's using. Now, if you come outside the aircraft, as we uh, pitch up or pitch down, we'll see that the APU-6 launchers, which uh, house the, uh, the Vicker, will... Um, adjust themselves to align the launchers with the target. And again, we'll need to keep that uh, switch in auto mode to let that happen. So that's a uh, little overview of using the Vicker anti-tank missile. Uh, next we'll look at using unguided bombs. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, reset. 
we're going to select the uh, inner pylons now for uh, weapons. And we see we have our designator for the um, uh, munition canisters. And we have two of those. If we go outside the aircraft, we'll take a look at those. Now, when delivering unguided bombs, it's um, not that different from the level of technology of a World War II era aircraft. There's really no kind of fancy uh, aiming devices or CCIP delivery uh, reticles. It's pretty much using a lot of Kentucky windage to get the, um, uh, the bombs on target. So, uh, that being said, we'll probably go ahead and put the uh, HUD to standby mode. Um, go ahead now and uh, take off the hover mode. Reset trim, and we'll fly to the target. Now you notice uh, down here on the Abris, um, during pre-flight, I went ahead and uh, created a uh, box over the target area so I can better align myself during my uh, bombing run. Now, if I were delivering a bomb uh, such as a 250 kilo uh, bomb, I would probably do so in more of a uh, diving attack, um, but given I'm going to uh, be using the canister, it makes more sense to just a, uh, a level delivery over the target area. starting to make out some of the uh, artillery uh, firing here in the distance. And shortly before I get to the target, I'll go ahead and hold down the uh, release weapon button. weapons. And uh, again, releasing uh, unguided weapons is pretty straightforward, uh, not too complicated. So uh, that concludes this note, uh, taking a look at the Baker anti-tank missile and unguided weapons. I uh, hope you enjoyed this note and I'll see you next time.